Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling leak code problem 2749, minimum operations to make the integer zero. It sounds a bit abstract, but we'll break it down step by step into something much more manageable. Let's get started. All right, here's the official problem description. We're given two numbers, which we'll call num1 and num2. Our goal is to make num1 equal to zero by performing a specific operation as few times as possible. If it's impossible, we should return negative one. So let's simplify this. We have a starting number, num1, and we want to get it down to zero. The only tool we have is this operation. In one operation, we get to pick a number i between zero and 60, and then we subtract two to the power of i plus num2 from our current num1. Our job is to find the minimum number of these operations to hit zero. Let's think about what happens if we decide to do, say, k operations. Each time we do an operation, we subtract num2, dogachu. So after k operations, we've subtracted num2 a total of k times. We've also subtracted k different powers of 2. We don't know which powers of 2 yet, just that there are k of them. This lets us set up a really important equation. The final value of num1 will be its starting value, minus k times num2, minus the sum of all those powers of 2 we chose. And since we want that final value to be 0, we can just rearrange the equation. This is the key insight. The problem is now, find the smallest k, where num1 minus k times num2 can be expressed as a sum of exactly k powers of 2. Okay, let's make this concrete with the first example. We have num1 as 3, and num2 as negative 2. The easiest way to find the minimum number of operations is to just try them in order. Let's test if one operation is enough, then 2, then 3, and so on. For each k we test, we'll calculate that target value, which we'll call x. First up, let's try k equals 1. Our target value x is 3 minus 1 times negative 2, which equals 5. Now for the main question, can the number 5 be represented as the sum of exactly one power of 2? Well, no, 5 itself isn't a power of 2 like 4 or 8. So one operation is not enough. All right, let's try k equals 2. The target value x becomes 3 minus 2 times negative 2, which is 7. Can we make 7 by adding up two powers of 2? Let's look at the binary representation of 7. It's 1, 1, 1, which means 7 is 4 plus 2 plus 1. That's a sum of three powers of 2. So two powers of 2 isn't enough to make 7. Okay, let's try k equals 3. Our target x is 3 minus 3 times negative 2, which is 9. Now we have to ask, can the number 9 be made from the sum of exactly three powers of 2? This is where we need a general rule. And here is that rule. It's a neat property of binary numbers. A positive number x can be written as the sum of k powers of 2, if and only if two conditions are met. First, the number of vac on bits in x, also known as its pop count, must be less than or equal to k contami k dapra. This represents the minimum number of powers of 2 you need. Second, k itself must be less than or equal to x, inbex. This is because you can always break down powers of 2, but you can't use more than x ones to sum up to x. So let's go back to our example with this new rule. When k was 3, our target x was 9. The binary for 9 is 1001. It has 2 on bits, so its pop count is 2. Now let's check the conditions. Is the pop count which is 2, less than or equal to k which is 3? Yes it is. Is k less than or equal to x which is 9? Yes it is. Since both conditions pass, we've found our answer. The smallest number of operations is 3. This gives us a clear strategy. We just need to check each possible number of operations, k, y, starting from 1, and going up. For each k, we calculate our target x, and then we apply our two-part rule. Is the pop count of x less than or equal to k, and is k less than or equal to x? The very first k that satisfies both conditions is our minimum, and we're done. Now, what if we never find a solution? There are a couple of ways our search can fail. First, our target value x might become negative. Since powers of 2 are positive, their sum can never be negative, so that's an impossible situation. Second, our operation count k might become larger than our target x. This breaks one of our core conditions. If either of these things happens, we know a solution isn't possible, and we should stop and return negative 1. All right, here's the Python code that implements this logic. As you can see, it's a loop that perfectly mirrors the strategy we just outlined. Let's break it down piece by piece. First, we initialize our operation count, k, to 1. Then, we start a loop that will, 
in theory, run forever. We use this while true structure, because we don't know in advance how many k values we'll need to test. We'll exit the loop from the inside once we find an answer, or determine it's impossible. Inside the loop, the very first step is to calculate our target value, x, for the current number of operations, k. This is just a direct translation of the formula we derived earlier, num1 minus k, times num2. Next come the crucial checks. First, we handle the failure case. If x is already less than k, our second condition, k less than equals x, is broken. Since k will only get bigger, and x will only get smaller from here, we know it's impossible, so we return negative 1. If that check passes, we then test our main condition. Is the number of set bits in x less than, or equal to k? If it is, both conditions are met, and we found our answer. We return the current value of k. Finally, if neither of the checks caused us to return, it means the current k is not the answer. So we simply increment k by 1, and the while loop continues to the next iteration, testing the next possible number of operations. So how fast is this solution? It's actually very efficient. The time complexity is logarithmic with respect to num1. This might seem surprising since we're just incrementing k by 1, but the two conditions we're checking, k growing and x shrinking, cause the valid solution window to close very quickly. We only need to check a handful of values for k. For space, it's as good as it gets. We only use a few variables to store our state, so the space complexity is constant, or big O of 1. Let's recap the main ideas. The biggest step was reframing the problem from a series of operations into a single algebraic equation. This led us to the core question about representing a number as a sum of powers of 2. And the solution to that came from understanding a key property of binary numbers, the two-sided check involving the pop count and the value of the number itself. By iterating and applying this check, we found a simple and efficient solution. And that's it for this problem. I hope this breakdown made sense and helped you understand the logic. If it did, please consider hitting the like button or subscribing for more videos. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. And hey, if you're feeling extra generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Thanks for watching, keep coding, and I'll see you in the next one.